Hello, lighting people. One of the more prominent North American manufacturers in the architectural lighting sector is LMPG, the parent company of well-known brands such as Lumenpulse, Sternberg, Bode, Flexworks, ALW, among others. So today, the company has announced several leadership changes affecting both the individual brands and overall company leadership. With that in mind, we thought it'd be a good idea to catch up with LMPG executive chairman and founder, FX Suve, to learn more about these changes and also to get his thoughts on other important factors impacting lighting markets both now and in the future. FX, hello and thank you for joining us today for Five Big Questions. Hey, hello Al, it's been a while, how are you? It's been a while, we've done this a few times over the last couple of years and it usually is discussing one of the acquisitions that you folks have made, adding an architectural lighting brand to your portfolio. Today we're talking about those brands but also the bigger company strategy as well. So let's jump right into it, FX. What are, what are the big announcements you have today about your company and how is this positioning you folks for future growth? Essentially today we're announcing that we're reorganizing the company in order to be able to really take the, all the opportunities together and for us to stay connected to the market. When we're building a business, you know, we're building a business over several years. That's why I'm always saying it's not a destination building a business, it's a real journey. And, you know, everything you encounter when you're going through your journey, you know, that's what shapes the future also. So what we've done over the past couple of years, you know, we've acquired four companies and those four companies really brought us lots of opportunities on the table. Obviously, growth opportunities, organic growth opportunities, and new market access, uh, but also opportunities to be better as a group. And we decided earlier in the year that you know we were combining some of our manufacturing capabilities in order to give us more agility and to allow us to be more competitive where needed, but also to really capitalize on the collective intelligence that our group has. And this has been a lot of work, you know, over the past year or so. And, and we're seeing now the fruits of all those efforts, you know, coming to, uh, you know, to life, which is very positive for us. For me, what's very important is what made this company special, what made this group special, you know, it's our ability to stay connected to our clients, to stay connected to our partners, the agents, and, you know, all of the constituents in the industry. And when you're building a company and the company's growing, it's very easy to get lost into the internal details that, that you need to take care of. They are important, but it's very important to stay connected to the market. So this reorg is allowing me personally to be more on the business rather than being in the business into all details. You know, I've been working closely with Peter Timoteatos, who is becoming the new uh, effective today, uh, president and CEO of LMPG. But Peter has been alongside with me for the past 10 years. We've, he's been my partner in crime. <laughs> We've been building this group together. And, uh, and the beauty of it is to see that, you know, his successor is Rocco Masella, you know, that has been with us for almost 10 years also, you know, started off as a VP of finance for Exania in Italy and then moved to Sternberg, you know, right after, you know, as the VP of finance and very, very soon after uh, head of operations and became the president of Sternberg over the past couple of years. What, what makes our company special it's our people are growing from within. You know, a lot of the key positions have been filled over the years by people in the company. We didn't have a lot of people moving out. You know, we've had a lot of people growing, which makes our company very agile with a lot of uh, uh, collective knowledge allowing us to grow. You know, and as a consequence of having, you know, Rocco moving into the group CFO position, you know, it's opening up a new opportunity for the president of Sternberg you know, with John Geegan, you know, who had been, you know, with us for a relatively short period of time as VP of sales for ALW, who is now moving into uh, the helms of uh, Sternberg, which is a century old brand that we're really proud of. So lots of key strategic moves allowing us uh, to look at the future and allowing us and specifically me to be connected very closely to the market and focus on innovation and focus on how could we be a better company? How could we be closer to all of our partners in the industry? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a great analysis of uh, why you're doing these moves and what those moves are. So the way I'm hearing it is that your executive chairman, Peter, is getting a bigger uh, 
responsibility being president and CEO of LMPG while maintaining his Lumen Pulse president role, That's reporting right. to you. And then we have Rocco moving into group CFO and then John Geegan taking over as the president of Sternberg. Lots of great moves, all internal to your point um, and all good, solid people, obviously, that are respected in the marketplace. So congratulations on all of that. Let's talk about let's talk about you. FX, because you know, you're well known in the industry, whether it's the IALD circles or business circles, et cetera. Um, so now, um, you know, some people might think that, wow, he's, he's, you know, one step out the door, but it doesn't sound like that based on what you said. It sounds like you're going to be on the front lines a little bit more. Tell me more about that and what some projects are, or some of your mission is to, uh, to do with your, with your new responsibilities as you define it. Yeah. 100%. I mean, building a company is surrounding yourself with strong people and 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 that that was what i've done right from the beginning but what excites me a lot is to be connected to people to be connected to market strategies to product innovation i like to have time to think you know it's like when you are so much in the action you don't have a lot of time to think you need to react to a lot of things i think it's really allowing us to position ourselves in a very strong uh, uh future strategy so my my goal is to speak to our you know clients to understand their pain points uh to understand you know what 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 problems are they trying to solve so that you know i can put my years of experience at trying to solve those problems connecting the dots between all of our brands that can solve those problems you know and that's what i've been doing over the past year or so a lot more we've been preparing for this transition for more than a year you know and it's just now we feel i feel that the team is ready so that i can move to the next level i'm still going to continue to lead our m a initiatives you know our strategies on how we expand inorganically i'm going to continue to do that uh, but i'm going to be spending a lot more time in the field you know spending time with our various brands you know regional sales managers you know and agents and clients because i want them to feel that we care you know we're not a faceless conglomerate you know that is disconnected from the market we are engaged with our community and i want to be at the forefront of that so that's going to be my priorities well, that makes a lot of sense. And, and when uh, you, you talk about your new role and how you're going to be doing that, I think there's a term that's used in manufacturing circles a lot, which is the voice of the customer. And it sounds like you're going to give, uh, give away some of that uh, corporate governance, um, time consuming and very important roles to others who are capable of handling it. And you're going to be able to get involved with the customers and bring that voice of the customer back to the company to hopefully make things continue to grow and, and succeed. Yeah. So um, thank you for that overview. When we think about the brands that you have, whether it's the four you've acquired in the recent years or recent couple of years or, or all the ones that you've acquired over the years. Um, one of the things that, that, that the market sees and that we see as industry observers is you call it the house of brands approach where you have these individual brands that, that really do at least from an outward standpoint, they do appear to act autonomously, whether it's how they're aligned in the various marketplaces or the product launches that they have. You don't see the same product coming out with different labels on it. How do you, how do you manage that and manage the, the, the challenges that might come along with that from a market standpoint, manufacturing standpoint, or other uh, challenges? Well, first of all, we're making sure that we're choosing brands that are adding to, uh, to the market, that, we're, that are adding to what we're already doing. It's hard not to have any overlap. There's always overlap a little bit, you know, from brand to brand. But the clear DNA of each brand is obvious to people. When you look at a brand, you recognize the brand for who they are. And that's, for me, the most important thing. And the best way for this to be preserved is for not getting involved. <laughs> it's letting them the autonomy and to preserve their identity and to be able to drive forward. So what do we do as a group? We share a lot. So we're sharing our product visions. We're sharing our strategies by respecting everybody's brand strategies. We're making sure we're not stepping on anybody's toes. We're allowing a lot of autonomy from a channel perspective. For example, we will never tell, you know, a brand you need to go, you know, with this agent. You know, if we're collectively making a decision that, hey, for all the good reasons, it makes sense to be aligned in one territory, it's because it happened naturally. The market drove this decision, not us, you know, and that's how we've been doing it, you know, as from the beginning, you know, so I think it's, it's by defending this autonomy that, that we can be a different group. 
you know, and, and very agile. And it's giving us, you know, a, an incredible spirit inside the group where everybody's proud to be part of the group, but also be part of their own brands that they're defending every day. Yeah, we, we see that when we're in the marketplaces at the various events and, and, and crossing paths with uh, whether it be the Fluxworks, the Sternberg, the Lumen Pulse people, uh, you're well represented and you do have those uh, those marketplaces um, or those brands, I should say, acting in an in a independent way while still obviously being part of the, the, the LMPG corporation. When when we look uh, to another LMPG venture that um, that involves multiple brands, uh, we look ahead eight months to Light Fair 2025, which will be in Las Vegas. And you folks were really one of the, one of the bigger and more significant names to sign on early with Lightfair 2025. What caused you to make that move and get involved? And, and what do you expect to, to, um, to get out of Lightfair as, as LMPG? So for us, uh, the most important thing and our predominant focus is to support the lighting design community, whether it's IELD, whether it's IES. As everybody know, you know, we, you know, Lightfair is owned, you know, two thirds by those two organizations. Uh, I felt like they needed to have a third partner that understood the lighting business, uh, which they, they did, you know, by bringing the messy people, you know, they brought a lot of knowledge from our industry, you know, trying to reshape what Lightfair used to be in the past. Uh, I think supporting IELD and IES is, is paramount for us, you know, and that's the predominant focus. You know, we know it's an uphill battle to rebuild, you know, a brand, like Lightfair, uh, we've been through very difficult times, you know, through the pandemic, which made, you know, big events like that a little harder to materialize, you know, and we've been to, uh, to Light and Building and we saw Light and Building being a lot smaller, you know, during COVID and then came back to life with a greater energy at the last, you know, uh, event. I think those events are important if they're managed correctly, if the right attendance is going, I think it's important to have young designers attending those events. I think it's important for manufacturer to support the bodies that are behind those events, like IELD and IES. It's not that you know we are extremely fans of trade shows. It takes a tremendous amount of work, you know, to uh, commit to a trade show, but we're definitely committed to the IELD and IES you know, uh, groups that are really uh, pushing forward, you know, our industry. And we need to support that as an organization. We certainly wish them the best for this event to be a success. And, and our main reason why we decided to support was really to support them. And that's the original decision. Well, I know there's a lot of uh, gratitude expressed to uh, you folks and all the other exhibitors who have signed on early. You folks, of course, taking a, a larger than, than average uh, space there with, with all with your large presence and your many different brands. So, so thank you for doing that. Thank you for um, supporting IESILD initiatives by helping to, to fuel what will hopefully be a very successful Light Fair 2025. And, um, and, and yes, I agree that the young designers and other people who go there, whether it be for education, for, for walking the trade show or both, um, can, can hopefully realize some of those many benefits that the show has. It's been an important part of my career as far as networking and building my um, my knowledge of, of, of the lighting industry. And hopefully we can continue to see that thrive in the, in the future years moving forward. And when, when we think about, um, you know, just the big picture, FX. You're you're a, a visionary guy who's started up multiple businesses and acquired others. Um, and you and you look at things now. You know the light fair heydays were were, were you know 2010 to 2019 when it was attracting you know 20 plus thousand people, and that was the LED revolution. You of course were an LED source that was part of that uh, from the from the get go. Um, and now as we look forward to you know what the next disruptor or the next innovation might be. What is your crystal ball see and how will your company adapt to, you know, what's next in lighting? I mean, you know, it's all about sequence, right? It's uh, when LEDs uh, came to, to life, I mean, they, they've been around for, for decades, you know, for not for illuminations, but they've been around for decades for multiple other, you know, applications. Uh, but when it became a serious source, you know, a lot of people were in doubts, you know, because we've seen over the years so many different sources whether it was uh, allergen, tungsten allergen, metal halide, high pressure sodium, and, and various technologies that we've tried over the induction lamp, if you remember, so many different technologies. So we thought that, I mean, a lot of people thought that it was going to be just one of them, 
right? It was a massive tsunami that really changed the way we we're designing products, the way we're specifying products, where everything is integrated, you know, from the source to the luminaire, to the power, to the controls. And it, it really has an impact. So the first thing that, you know, everybody was caring about is the, the efficacy and how many lumens per watt can you get out of a source? I think we don't need to prove that point anymore. Everybody knows that it's super efficient. You know, it goes without saying. So the conversation now is more about, is it comfortable? We can no longer afford those glare bombs, you know, throwing ton of lights everywhere. We want quality of light. You know, how could we achieve that? Taking advantage of the small sources. I think that the industry is starting to recognize that because I'm seeing more and more companies caring about optical innovations and performance. But I think it's only the beginning. Not enough companies are investing time for quality of light. And what I mean by quality of light is putting the right amount of light exactly where you need it by preserving the quality of the occupants. You know, it's like you need to be comfortable, you know, into a space. The space needs to look good, but you need to feel good about that space. And that comes from, you know, optical innovation. That's what helps creating dramatic effect, contrast, all of those great things. So optical innovation in LEDs is really the beginning because a lot of people are doing, doing the same thing. You know, we're seeing a lot of that, unfortunately, and very few people are taking risk and investing into uh, really changing that. So I think we're going to see more and more of that. We're starting to see more of that. It's definitely a focus for us, no question. Uh, and then it's about controls. You know, who will hold the magic key to the control kingdom? You know, it is difficult because there's so many different options, so many different protocols. Uh, I'm a big believer of being agnostic to control. Being agnostic doesn't mean that you cannot innovate. You have to be agnostic in a smart way, being everybody's best friend in a way that it's being the easiest company to integrate with any controls. How could we innovate there? How could we be seamlessly integrated to anything? I think that's really the holy grail where controls are going. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, a common protocol around the corner. Is it going to be uh, Dali who's going to win with their inroads that they've made, not only in, in Europe, but starting to make some slow inroads in, in North America? Uh, I really believe the simplicity of control and the agnostic approach of control integration is the future also in addition to optics. So I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, how we're gonna achieve those objectives. I think the industry is is really changing because projects are a little bit more complex. You know, when when you when you have controls, when you have smart controls, uh, multiple sensors, when you're connecting your lighting systems back to building automation, it brings different skill sets to the table. You know, and I think the agents are really changing also. You know, the type of agents that I remember 20 years ago, they had to deal with control, but control was representing 5% of the total project cost. It's no longer the same. You know, all of those agents today, they have controls divisions, you know, where lots of, of different people. I think our industry is becoming a lot more complex, technically speaking, you know, and I think that this is an opportunity for us to differentiate and, and to really... Uh, uh, come out with a holistic approach to what lighting should be, you know. So we're spending a lot of time really understanding those, you know, opportunities in front of us. Yeah, I, I love what you said about so many parts there regarding the the actual designing a fixture and a project for the occupant and not just for some of the other stakeholders on the project. And then the last thing about the controls point that you made is is excellent, and it brings me back to your early days when it was just Lumen Pulse, and I, I remember competing against Lumen Pulse and hating it because your spec sheets were even just like so simple to look at the way you spelled out the color temperature and other options. And, and, and I, I, I could, if, if you take that same approach and spell out your control scheme in a way, and I know you folks have been doing controls for a long time as well. Um, but you, you do that in a way to be intelligently agnostic, as you described. Um, I can't wait to see what you folks come up with there and uh, very excited to see that what's happening now and in the future from LMPG and your family of brands. Congratulations, F on all these Thank moves. Um, I'm excited for you to get out there a little more and, 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 and capture the voice of the customer. And thank you for spending some time with us today. And thank you for joining us for five big questions. Thank you, Al.
looking forward to uh, more opportunities like these in the future. We'll see you next time. Thanks.